the channel this is Austin back again with a beginner friendly tutorial so in this simple tutorial I'm going to show you what you normally find on websites designing a simple frequently asked question section so you always come across this on the internet they always show you the questions and when you click it they display the answer so you don't want to display both the question and answer at a go so what they do they hide the answer so the user will have to click the question and see the answer you normally find this on this section they frequently ask questions or the fuck so that's what i'm going to be showing you in this simple tutorial we are creating this from scratch but later on i may use a framework called materialize in the next tutorial i'll be posting on youtube and see how it's also achieved using a framework so here we are going to be creating it from scratch using html css some little css and jquery very very simple so i'm going to save here and we lose everything in the browser what you need to do is just create a simple markup oh i need to change my keyboard to united states so i'll just create a simple markup here and say our title will be fuck frequently asked questions that's the section we want and you see the title here oh i think i have to restart this go live again and this should open up here as you can see we have a simple markup for html this is how every website starts if you're a beginner then we shall go in the body section and i'm just going to put up a div here and i'm going to give it sorry i'm going to give it a class of fuck the frequently asked questions then i'm going to put some h2 I put that frequently asked oh <laughs> frequently asked questions Jesus I can't read and type so we have that then let us put also both our answers and questions so I will use H3 for the questions and I say how how is a refund so you can type what you want and I'm going to create a div and give it oh we have to give this one the class of question And this one will be the answer and I'm just going to use this fake text for rolem ipsum so you just write rolem I'm having some emit abbreviations I can say rolem 20 and I place tab on my keyboard and it will give me 20 characters or words so you can see if we are to space this we are just having the question in the h3 tag and the answer in the this div section so we are going to do this for like three questions or four as i said the h3 has the class of question and i say what is the maximum shipping time so what normally people ask you then I'm just going to say rolling 30 and they'll give me that and I'll put a class of answer
let us put the last one so I'm just going to copy this and the question is the one going to change let's say what if I receive damaged goods as you can see these are our questions the answers sorry answers questions and answers and we are going to apply some simple CSS I'm going to go up here in the head section I'm going to write style So I'm going to first, I want everything to be centered somehow. I want the the questions to be fluid. So I'm going to target this div with a class of fuck. So it's a class. I'll say fuck. And I'm going to give it some width of 50%. I'm also going to center it, so I will use margin zero auto. As you can see, they are somehow centered. If I make this, so they are somehow centered. And then by default, we don't want these answers to be displayed to the user. So we are going to target this class of answer here in the head section. So answer. And we say display to none or oh, non nin none. So these answers will be hidden. That's what we want. But let us also make these ones feel like links or questions, something that is clickable. Because if you see when I over over, we get that cursor that is not indicating anything that it's a clickable element. So what we are going to do, we are going to, sorry, we are going to target this class question. So I'm going to do dot question. So this is the class we gave to the H3s. And I'm going to say cursor. So we want to set the type of cursor. It's going to be a pointer. Because now, if you are to see when I hover over them, we get that pointer cursor. Then let us make them also blue. I will just write blue as a word. Save this so the user will know that they are clickable. You can see they are like links, stuff like that. Now let us switch to jQuery. And... This is what we are having. So it's upon you if you create another folder, let's say JS, make sure you specify the root directory where you're going to be finding that. But since mine they're in the same area or document with the questions.html file, then I'm just going to write a script tag here. Let me first pull up. Just write a script tag there. And see, sorry, we need to first link to jQuery. Space, we specify the source attribute. And you can see when they are suggesting it here, I'm using VS Code. So you write the name of the file that you want to link to. So we want to link to jQuery.js. Then below here, we create our custom script tag, the way we are going to write the code that displays the answers so drop down as always in jQuery you have to first listen to the document to load so we shall say dollar sign document dot ready so when the document is ready or fully loaded then what is inside here will run when the document is ready I have also some extension called prettier. You can see when I save, 
it takes it back to the same line so stuff like that then what we need to do is now add a click event on this h3 what you're going to do is target that element so here we are going to first target the parent element and I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this because if you are to see here this h3 is inside this parent element with the class of fuck the frequently asked questions so we want to first target that element then we go to h3 and when we do that then we add a click event so on click so you can just right click direct but i prefer this then on then we say the type of event that we want it's a click event then we put this callback function what happens when that element is clicked and i'm going to tell you why i did this if you're a beginner because if you already know it's okay just continue watching but still hey there i'm going to explain why i did this so on click when this thing is clicked we want to display the answer so what you're going to do you're going to say this and when i write this i'm referring to the current element that is being clicked on so i, ca I don't want to repeat the same thing here and put it here so the reason why we use this we are specifying that this current element that is being placed on or clicked on so when I click this how to refund how is the refund process so when I said this I'm referring to that element that is being clicked at that moment so this and we say dot next what next is it is an inbuilt jQuery function that is used to return the next siblings of the selected element you can see here in our markup we are having this now this one is like the parent element to this so what we are doing when we are saying when they click this go to the next element that is near it remember from H they we, we go downwards when we click this then the process is going to continue down so what we are saying what this next function does it is used to return the next sibling of the selected element so from here they open the next sibling stuff like that I don't know if you have understood but I'll explain again so when we say this dot next then we also type what we want to happen so we want to slide toggle we want a slide talk function and it's here slide toggle and end it with semicolon when I save as I said I have a prettier function sorry extension to align this the way I want or the way it wants like that so with all only this if you go back to the browser and try to click this it's going to go to the next sibling and open it so when I click it back it closes stuff like that so now you get to know what this one does as i told you it returns the next sibling to the clicked element so when i click this it will return the next element let's say the div that is below it so when we click this question the next function will say will sense that you want to open the next sibling that follows that element stuff like that and back to this area where I told you I'm going to explain so imagine you have a lot of h3s on your site let's say let me put another h3 outside here let me say h3 and I say what is HTML stuff like that so when we have this another h3 is going to be outside Check what happens if I directly select the H3 on the page. Then if I remove this parent element, when I save this, so what we are telling jQuery is any H3 
on the page when it's clicked it has to perform this which is not recommended because see when I click this it's going to toggle what is even out of its edge or brackets so this is not okay we always need to follow the DOM order so we always specify the parent element where this h3 is being kept in so that's why I put first the parent element so it's what I select and whatever h3 that is inside that parent element has to get this type of function so that's why we specify sorry that's why we specify this and save the document so that's why we specify the parent element and everything that follows inside it we get that functionality so this is how you can easily design a frequently asked question section on your website so in the next tutorials we are going to create this using a framework called materialize and you see how it's done so it's upon you how you want to design this this is how i designed it just to make it beginner friendly so guys subscribe to the channel and i will already see you in the next tutorials peace